This is the little girl's first day of school. Her uncle specifically told her to behave low-key. However, in the first class, Mary couldn't bear it. Looking at the simple arithmetic problem of adding three plus three in the textbook, she complained. Is there really someone in the world who doesn't know the answer is six? The teacher was surprised. Then she did a two-digit addition. In an instant, Mary figured it out. Teacher directly asked her what is 57 multiplied by 135 and then turned around to get a calculator. But in that short period of time, Mary gave the answer again and even said the square root of the answer. Mary couldn't stand the stupid school anymore, so she asked the teacher to call her uncle Frank to pick her up. Frank seemed to have expected this and quickly came to the school to take Mary home. It's so difficult for this little girl to go to school. Other parents' expectations to their children might be high, but Frank and his sister just want Mary to be an ordinary little girl. It's because Mary's mother, Frank's sister, used to be a mathematical genius. But when she was about to solve an important math problem that the world had not yet solved, she made the worst choice. In her will, she entrusted Mary to Frank. After that, Frank quit his high-paying job and brought his niece Mary to a remote seaside place to make a living by doing odd jobs repairing ships. Faced with today's situation at school, he had to use the pet cat Fred from home as an analogy. Fred is very fast, but he doesn't catch seabirds. So you can't ridicule your classmates and teachers just because you know everything. Under Frank's earnest persuasion, Mary took Fred to school the next day to make friends. She introduced Fred to her classmates. Fred is a stray cat she picked up from the garbage dump. No one understands him and no one takes care of him. Even though Fred only has one eye, he is very smart. Bonnie, the teacher, took Mary's words to heart. In a math quiz in class, Mary only took one minute to complete it. Then the teacher gave her a harder test and this time she finally felt a sense of satisfaction. They looked at each other and smiled and Mary felt understood. But this peaceful school life didn't last long. One day, on the school bus, a classmate brought his carefully crafted homework with him. However, some older students deliberately tripped him. Mary stood up and scolded the bully, but the bully didn't think he did something wrong. So without hesitation, Mary grabbed a book and smashed it on his head, causing him to bleed. The principal called Frank, Mary's uncle, to the school and scolded him for the behavior of his niece. The principal suggested sending Mary to an elite school and Frank wouldn't have to worry about the tuition fees since Mary's intelligence would help her secure a scholarship. However, Frank strongly disagreed with sending Mary to an elite school. He also took pride in Mary's defense of her classmate. The school couldn't do anything to Frank, so they went directly to Mary's grandmother. Frank's mother, who was also Mary's grandmother, was who Frank worried about. Evelyn, upon hearing of Mary's mathematical talent, was anxious to take her little granddaughter away. She informed Frank that only she could provide Mary with an elite education. According to her, Mary would follow in the footsteps of her mother and solve mathematical problems in the world. But Frank knew that if Mary was taken away, her childhood would be over and she might end up repeating the mistakes of her mother. However, Evelyn didn't care about all this and told Frank to meet in court. Frank was lost upon hearing this. Given his current financial situation, he found it difficult to compete against his mother. When he returned home, he saw Mary buried in her studies. He picked her up like a little chicken and they played happily in the sunset. All he wanted was for Mary to have a happy and ordinary childhood. That night, Frank went to the bar to drink away his sorrows. He met Bonnie, Mary's teacher, who had heard about the situation with Mary's mother. She comforted Frank and they discussed Mary's education. Their opinions were in complete agreement, so they returned to Frank's house. The weekend morning was quiet because Mary was in the care of their neighbor. But this morning, she couldn't find the DVD she wanted to watch. When she returned home to search for her own collection of CDs, then she accidentally ran into her teacher. Bonnie felt embarrassed and was about to leave in a taxi. Last night, Frank guaranteed that Mary wouldn't be home, but now she suddenly showed up. Feeling frustrated and embarrassed, he complained, can he just give five minutes of his own life? Hearing this, Mary ran away feeling aggrieved. Frank also realized that he had gone overboard. He approached Mary, who was huddled in a corner, and apologized. Mary forgave Frank on the surface, but she also understood that she was a trouble for him. After the court hearing, Evelyn got visitation rights, and Mary was sent to her grandmother's house for two days. At Evelyn's home, she immediately took Mary to MIT where a professor gave her a test to assess her mathematical abilities. Experts confirmed that Mary was indeed a genius. Evelyn finally let go of her worries and felt excited. She showed Mary the honor wall at MIT. Only who solved the seven millennium prize problems in mathematics were listed. Only one had been solved so far, and Mary's mother had come close to solving one of them. Looking at the empty space, Mary was lost in thought and said, maybe I'll have my picture up here someday. This was exactly what Evelyn wanted to hear. Having graduated from Cambridge University in mathematics herself, she had abandoned her dream when she got married and had a child. But when she discovered her daughter's extraordinary mathematical talent, she imposed her own dream on her. Since then, Mary's mother had lost her childhood. 
She had no friends, no extracurricular books, only countless mathematical formulas and problems. She wasn't even allowed to have a hint of a teenage romantic relationship and her first love was ruined at the age of 17 by Evelyn. This made Mary's mother rebellious and led her down the wrong path, eventually getting involved with a man who left her when she became pregnant with Mary. After giving birth to Mary, she chose to end her life. And that was how Mary came into Frank's hands. In the end, Evelyn brainwashed Mary once again, telling her that with enough efforts and her help, Mary's picture will eventually hang on that wall. The two days in Boston came to an end and Mary was sent back to Frank's place. She said that her grandmother's house was very big, comfortable, and had her favorite piano. However, clever Mary noticed that her grandmother was a very controlling person, so she didn't like that place at all. Afterwards, Frank and Mary made a promise that she wouldn't be sent anywhere else. On the day of the trial, Evelyn unexpectedly brought Mary's biological father. This man had never visited the mother and daughter since Mary was born, but he argued that he didn't know where to find them. Frank's lawyer immediately searched online and easily found information about Mary's mother. This indicated that the man had never intended to look for the mother and daughter in his entire life, so his attempt to fight for custody was absurd. In the first round, Evelyn lost, but Frank made a fatal mistake. He told Mary about her biological father when they returned home. Upon hearing this, Mary locked herself in the bathroom and cried. She couldn't believe that she had always had a father but never thought to look for her. She felt like Fred, abandoned and ignored by everyone, just like being left in a garbage dump. To explain to Mary, Frank took her to the hospital. They sat outside the delivery room where a family was waiting for the birth of a baby. After hearing the news that the baby had safely bore, all the family members jumped for joy. Frank pointed at them and explained to Mary that her birth was also celebrated in the same way. Everyone was happy for her birth and he was the one who brought the good news to everyone. Afterward, Mary also joined in the excitement and shared the thrill of a new life with strangers. Frank looked at her with mixed feelings in his heart. Another court day came. Frank's lawyer took the initiative and revealed the tragedy of Mary's mother, but Evelyn still believed she did nothing wrong. She believed that it was necessary sacrifice for the progress of humanity. Then Evelyn's lawyer counterattacked, claiming that Frank was not capable of raising Mary as he had very little savings and Mary didn't even have her own bedroom. Frank had no health insurance or retirement benefits, and most importantly, he had a criminal record for assaulting someone while drunk. This put the judge in a difficult situation as neither side seemed reliable. In the end, the judge proposed finding a foster family for Mary with both of them having visitation rights. After thinking about it for two days, Frank reluctantly agreed to the proposal. He personally inspected the foster family and found the conditions were excellent. They even had the piano that Mary had always dreamed of. Fred, her friend, also came along with her. However, Mary was still very sad. She cried and begged Frank to take her back home, but in the end, Frank hurriedly left. He had broken their promise and now he was alone. He finally had his own life, but something felt missing deep inside him that he couldn't fill no matter what. Time passed and one day, Bonnie saw an adoption notice for a one-eyed orange cat that looked just like Fred. She took a picture and sent it to Frank to confirm. When Frank saw the picture, he immediately recognized that it was his previous cat, Fred. He drove quickly to the shelter and arrived just in time before Fred was euthanized. The worker told him that someone allergic to cats had brought Fred in. Frank was confused because no one in the foster family was allergic to cats. He only knew one person who was allergic to cats, Evelyn. After returning home, Frank took out a box and went straight to the foster family. As expected, Evelyn was there and had even hired a private tutor to make Mary study various math problems. Seeing this, Frank threw a stack of documents on the table. He told Evelyn that Mary's mother had actually solved that difficult problem a long time ago. Evelyn refused to believe it because if Mary's mother had already solved it, why didn't she tell her? Even if she didn't tell her, how could she not publish such a great achievement? Frank explained that her sister's request was to publish it after death. Evelyn argued that his sister died six years ago. Frank said not after his sister's death, her request was published it after Evelyn's death. Evelyn was stunned and Frank explained that he revealed her sister's achievement now to protect Mary. It would take several years to publish the achievement. During these years, let Mary grow up well. After leaving, Frank found Mary. He hugged her tightly, apologizing over and over again. Mary first blamed him for abandoning her, then worried about Fred, saying that Fred had been taken away. Frank reassured her, saying that he had safely brought Fred back home. Mary raised her little hands, holding up a smile for Frank. Meanwhile, Evelyn examined the box and took out the thick stack of draft papers on which tears from her daughter were clearly visible as if falling drops of blood. Evelyn finally understood that all of her daughter's pain was conveyed through those drafts. She began to break down and cried uncontrollably. However, this lasted only for a moment. After she made a call to a university professor, Evelyn returned to her cold and heartless demeanor. Later, Mary finally escaped from her grandmother's control and continued living with Frank. 
he would take her to university classes, and if she didn't want to learn, he would bring her back to regular school to play and make friends with classmates. As an innocent and lively little girl, there is no substitute for the original movie. A good film is worth watching it yourself, but you don't know where you can watch these movies? Use Superbox. With Superbox, you can access all live TV channels in 4K quality. It also provides access to over 13,000 movies and series, and updates with the newest content very often. The total cost for one of these is two months of your cable bill. Then you never have to pay fees or bills ever again. Click the link in my bio and use my code to get it at a better price.